It was brought to my attention that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's brilliant, who's smarter than all of us, uh, he commented about Scientology. He defends Scientology. That's right. Neil deGrasse Tyson defends Scientology. But he adds, uh, Christianity and other religions are just as crazy as Scientology. That's how he's defending this whole thing. He was asked about the uh, the documentary uh, Going Clear, and uh, he says this. You have people who are certain that a man in a robe transforms a cracker into the literal body of Jesus, saying that what goes on in Scientology is crazy. Okay? Let's realize this. What matters is not who says who's crazy. What matters is we live in a free country. You can believe whatever you want. Otherwise, it's not a free country. It's something else. He uh, he continues. Where's his other quotes? Because then they explain the... Uh, the Scientology a little bit, but then he goes, I don't care what the tenets are of Scientology. What are the tenets, Jim Norton? What are the tenets of Scientology? I don't really know what they are, to be honest All right. with you. I don't know enough about it. All right, let's uh, read that paragraph. People that live on, in the building? On tenets. Sam, go up again. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Uh, let's see. The tenets of Scientology state that... Oh, the, the, oh, this is the creation story. All right, why don't you read the creation story? Well, it's uh, the... The, the way they phrase it is that uh, the tenets of Scientology state that the dictator of the galactic confederacy known as Xenu brought billions of his people to Earth in a spacecraft 75 million years ago and killed them, and that those spirits of those aliens bring harm to modern-day humans. Those are the Thetans. Wow. Because they, they froze... Yep, he lived in hell. <sighs> they Get froze it? all the people, wow. the aliens, right? and then they dropped them onto Earth, and they went into volcanoes. Wow! And then the volcanoes erupted. Yeah. And then all those dead people started, uh, the souls of those dead people went into every newborn and still goes into every newborn. So you sign up for Scientology because right. they get those dead people Are we breathing, out of your body. We're breathing that shit in right now? Thetans. They're right already now? inside you. Yes. I got an air purifier. It's not, it, they're already inside you. Why? By just breathing? They, they went inside you when you were born. Oh. So we didn't have a choice on this one? No, you have to go to Scientology. They get them out. Oh, well, that's, that's logical. <laughs> How do they get them out, though? Uh, through their practices. Auditing and stuff. Auditing. Auditing. What is that? Like, giving money? No, well, you have to give money, yeah, but auditing is, is basically they, they interview you. Oh, that's you where you and, hold the things? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. All right. And so they that, change your memories. Wow. That's right. That could be nice. That's right. I got some bad memories. I'm still trying to get out of my fucking head. <laughs> Easy. I don't care what the tenets are of Scientology. They don't distract me. I don't judge them, and I don't criticize them, Tyson says in this interview. Oh. In fact, according to Tyson, Scientology actually isn't any more bizarre than any other religion. Who is to say that one religion is rational and another isn't? It looks like the longer those thoughts have been around, the likelier it is to be declared a religion. If you've been around 1,000 years... You're a religion. If you've been around 100 years, you are a... Anyone? Crackpot. A uh, cult. A cult. You Jim Norton. Tyson says, or adds, I'm not going to sit here and say Scientology is a, is an, a, a legitimate religion and other religions are uh, legitimate religions. Oh, uh, illegitimate religion, okay, and the other ones are legit, gotcha. They're all based on belief systems. If you attend a, a, a setter, a cedar, a, set, uh, a cedar, How right? do you spell it? S-E-D-E-R. Seder. Seder, Seder, right, yeah. Seder. Seder, 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 If you attend a, a, a Seder, there's an empty <laughs> chair sitting right there, and the door is unlocked because Elijah might walk in. Yeah, that's true. That's just being courteous. Is it? Yeah. Do people, do, do, do people feel like silly gooses as that chair is empty? I think that's totally symbolic, and they know that Elijah ain't showing up in that motherfucker. It's more of a tradition. I think he just showed up to eat some guy, I'm Elijah, and you're like, how do we know you're Elijah? How many, how many people have sat down in his seat not knowing? Yes. And then what happens in the house? Yeah, are, 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 are there jokes to be had? Oh, look at <laughs> oh, who is. He yeah. thinks he's Elijah. Look at the big shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Big Shot, the Goyim. <laughs> you, you Elijah? <laughs> <laughs> you know that shit happens. Yeah, Elijah Schlesinger. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, these are educated people who do this now. Some will say it's ritual. Some will say it could literally happen. So you got people that know that it's a, is symbolic, but there are people, the hardcore ones, are like, no man, it could possibly happen, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, 
Look at uh, Mormonism, he continues. There are, there are ideas that are as space exotic within Mormonism as there are with Scientology. And it's more accepted because it's a little older than Scientology. So are we just more accepting of something that is older? What do you think of Neil deGrasse Tyson's comments? And then you post on their fucking website and people read it and then they start yelling and screaming at each other. Yeah. Hating each other. You calling just poopy heads opinions? and shit. So that's an, it's interesting. Yeah. I sort of believe that as well. You know, it's easier to accept a, something that is uh, very, Older. very old. Yeah, but I, I know that, that the, one of the reasons, too, is that we cannot see interviews with Christ. You know, he saw interviews with Christ and he said dumb shit. You're like, Ugh. Right. Well, you saw that his hair was fucked up or whatever, but right. it's easier to have faith in something that is seen as, oh, mm-hmm. but this is just, to me, it's too, it's just too new. Right. But yeah, maybe that he's right about it. it's a religion or a cult. I mean, what's the difference? We're going to get Neil deGrasse Tyson on the phone? Uh, no, he's going to be on the show on April 23rd. Well, that's too late. Yeah, we could talk. Uh, this is hot now. Yeah, come on, E-Rock. What the fuck? Piece of garbage. What's he going to talk about on the 23rd? His about awesome a black show. hole. Ooh. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah, he might fall in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what if you uh, walked by a bunch of ants? Shut up. We can talk about cookie people. We can talk about asteroids. They scare the fuck out of me. Hey, when's that astronaut coming in? Huh? We have an astronaut coming in here. That's right. When? Astronaut? Um, mm, is that tomorrow? We got an astronaut I don't think coming it's in. Tomorrow. Next know. week, I think. I oh. think it's next week. I think it's the same day as Louis C.K. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, very happy to announce that Louis C.K. Oh. will be doing our show next Wednesday, I think. With the season premiere of uh, Louis uh, happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. I saw the first four episodes. They are excellent. I, I believe he's gone even darker with this season. Our own Bob Kelly did a wonderful episode. Yeah, I hear it was great. His acting was great. He plays Louis' brother. Yeah, Bob Kelly is going to become an actor. Yeah. I mean, he is an actor already. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to be one of these guys you're going to see in a lot of shit, man. Yeah. He is on his way. Hopefully he'll become a comedian, too. That'd be nice. <laughs> Good luck. A double threat? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Jeopardy there, Sammy. Oh, you got it. Got a contestant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saw this? I know this guy. <laughs> Good friend of mine. Ah, uh, yes. Real character. Yeah. So uh, what's the backstory? Jeopardy gets awkward with contestants' understanding of, uh, of consent law. Well, pretty. A, uh, a question was asked. Mm-hmm. And uh, you should pay attention. You know, you're supposed to answer in the form of a question. Yeah. Yes. And the question that the man answered in uh, was a little bit embarrassing if he thinks it was accurate. Who's this rotund woman? She would be Iraqa. a contestant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I love the quick apology. <laughs> love it. Yeah, she's... Uh, who's the other one? She looks like Lady Di. She, well, from 15 years ago, yes. Yeah. Piggy lady. Why is she so rotund, you think? A lot of brain food, I guess. Yeah. You think she would be fighting for a stall upstairs with uh, oh, the yeah. big uh, shot yeah. from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think they would be fighting over the, the stall that's empty? And wouldn't take her long to use it once she got in there? Door shut? Yeah, big fat pants dropped. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to un- unload some carbohydrates? Yeah. Sun's out, gun's out. Y- you think she carb loads this one over here? She would carbo load, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right, All right let's uh, do the clip from Jeopardy. Yeah, this is good. Uh, in life for 400, please. In common law, the age of this signaling adulthood is presumed to be 14 in boys and 12 in girls. Tom? What is the age of consent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tom made mistakes. There's no reason to ridicule him. <laughs> What? Don't they go over this shit before they actually decide to use it on the show? Wouldn't someone like kind of put their hand up and go, "Look, there's a possibility that someone's going to say what is uh, the age of consent." They probably be. And that's going to make it awkward for everybody. Or are they doing the Steve Harvey thing where they want just crazy answers now, so they go viral on the internet? Probably. You think? <laughs> Although you'd think if it said the girl twelve, right? Yeah, I was. I yelled, "That's too high, Tom." <laughs> He was off by 10 years. 10 years? Sure. I don't think the average Jeopardy contestant thought that was the age of consent. 
What was the answer? I don't. I can't even Tim. figure it out. No, I mean <laughs> not the question. <laughs> what was the answer to the question? I can't even I figure believe. out. I'm going to guess pu- the beginning of puberty. Puberty. puberty? Yeah. But I, a common law. I guarantee you, he was thinking common law marriage. That that's probably what he was thinking. That, that doesn't sound as crazy. When he's in common law, he probably was thinking, "Oh, marriage, age of consent." You know, it doesn't sound crazy for a twelve-year-old girl to to you marry common law marriage to a twelve-year-old. No, but when he when he saw common law and the ages of fourteen and twelve, that was probably just what he thought the age of consent to get married. He right. was wrong. Yeah, he was, but I, I don't think that's as crazy a stretch as it seems. Girls are reaching puberty at twelve. It's the chicken. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Go back. I want to see. I want to see people laugh. Yeah, if there's grass on the field. Yeah, you get in there. You lick. <laughs> you lick the field. Uh. <laughs> you throw the field out. It's too old. And what they say? If there's grass on the field, Sam. Yeah, it's too uh. old. <laughs> get rid of that grassy field. Yuck. <laughs> I like to play on a nice, a nice clean field. Nice driveway. Yeah, nice smooth driveway. Very smooth driveway. Yeah, park. freshly paved. Yeah, yeah. Park my car in there, even if it doesn't function. Oh, oh God! Limp. Yeah, you can oh, God. Get a cram oh, your soft car into a little tight All garage. Right. Jesus. <laughs> <God. laughs> little garage is snug. Oh, so uncomfortable. That's to sit here. I feel all uncomfortable. I feel <laughs> icky. You make us all feel icky. <laughs> Uh, yes, we know South Park did an episode totally destroying Scientology. Yeah, I heard it's really good. It's a, it's a, it's a very funny episode. Uh, can we hear that again? Yes. In life for 400, please. In common law, the age of this signaling adulthood is presumed to be 14 in boys and 12 in girls. Tom? What is the age of consent? <laughs> no. You think, you think he's mortified today? Yeah. Yeah, uh, his answer has gone viral. But it doesn't seem, I honestly, common law, age of this, the age of consent is something you say. Um, you know what I mean? You don't say the age of puberty. You mm-hmm. say the age of consent. Yeah. And then signaling adulthood, that's actually not as crazy an answer as they're making it out. Yeah, but everybody who plays Jeff, all the answers are weird like this. Like, none of them are actually phrased the way anybody would phrase anything. I'm more surprised that uh, Jeopardy's still on the air. Yeah. Who watches that? My dad. He I enjoys could. a good Jeopardy? Yeah. He loves to he watch Jeopardy. He plays it at home. My son is a... <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't answer that in the form of a question. Sure so you can. One incorrect. with an N, one with an F. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> could, could, we, could you, like, walk us through his Jeopardy watching? Does yeah. he set up his treats and stuff? Like... Is it kind of a ritual, or he watches, does he do the Wheel of Fortune uh, thing? No, he doesn't watch Wheel of Fortune. That's, I mean, that's Don't for the, the masses. They, they go together, though. I think. I think they, seven it, and seven thirty. See, E Rock knows. How, why do you know that too? Because it's always joked upon. It's syndicated at those hours around the country. Oh, you know, he's not going to watch Wheel of Fortune. That's for uh, stupid people. That's for the dunderheads. He watches Jeopardy while my mom makes dinner. And he asks her every five minutes if she's ready for him to put ice in the glasses. You ready for ice? No, Jerry. What? Every day for the last 31 years. What's it, what does your OCD psychotic family do? You ready for ice? <laughs> no, not yet. It's his job to put ice in your glasses for dinner? He puts ice in the glasses for him and my mom. Because they drink iced tea every single dinner. They She brews tea. <laughs> And every single dinner, they have iced tea, and he puts the ice in the glasses. Why can't people get their own ice? No why? wonder Sam's a kook, though. That's why Sam's an eating kook. The whole thing is an OCD <laughs> fucking psychotic house of horrors. And you can't do it early, because then the ice will melt. But if the food's ready and there's no ice, then everything gets held up. How is it held up? It takes seconds to fill your cup with ice. So it goes, are you ready for ice yet? And how, Not yet. And does he, how, how much ice? Does he, half the glass? No, it's about three quarters of the he glass. He goes three quarters. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's no a, kidding. It's, it's legit iced tea. It's not bullshit sweetened. Like, they make tea and then they ice it. So, let's say dad wants a second cup of iced tea. Does he dump his ice out? No. And refresh the ice cubes? They put a couple more cubes in, okay. maybe. Gotcha. But does not dump out the ice. But that's really his job every day for the last 31 years? Yeah. Ready for we're ready for ice yet? Not yet. What if it's Final Jeopardy? Or or your mom at this point has it all timed out like, okay, I, I, the dinner's got to be ready right around the Final Jeopardy question, and then Jerry could come in and fill the uh, the cups with ice. Yeah, it's not going to conflict. Oh, my God. That's so weird, man. That is fucked up. Yeah. Sometimes my dad will snack 
I went over there the other day, mm-hmm. and there were Doritos crumbs in the peanut butter. <laughs> and he was dipping it because he had run out of like Tostitos and salsa. <laughs> so, he so he just found stuff <laughs> that rules. And I saw him, and I know he was dipping Doritos in the peanut butter jar. <laughs> Coke, <laughs> cherry. I'm like, what are you Love doing, cherry? I, I, it's great. Have you had it? It's, it's delicious. He might have came up with a new snack. You never know. Yeah, Doritos, Doritos and, and peanut, peanut butter. butter yeah. I, I could see where that would be tasty. I, and I, I completely understand what he's doing. Dipping is Cause good. Pe- I love peanut butter, but you need something with it. But then you take the peanut butter just out something. next time you want to use it, and it's full of Doritos crumbs. So why don't you just fucking take a knife and use it, then dip and scrape it off the knife with the fucking Doritos? I don't know. He dips the Doritos in a jar. Speaking of peanut butter, you want to know my treat? I make tiny little saltine peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for myself. Uh, but on saltines, that's I love like a saltine. Yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Love a saltine. I yeah, spread that peanut butter on nice, a little, a little jelly. Put another saltine on top. I got mini little. Uh, and that's a treat. Yeah, it's a wonderful treat. I lick that's them and smell them. The saltine. Do you, do you have to oh. smell it after you, you lick it? You it doesn't smell. smell no, 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 it doesn't smell like breath at all. It smells like the actual never wet smells cracker. Like, yeah, like cracker. You like wet cracker? It smells weird. Like lick a pretzel and sniff it. I don't know why I've been doing that my whole life. It's you a, do? Yeah. That's OCD. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy goes. Yeah. 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 My parents are weird for getting ice, but you're licking crackers and smelling them. Exactly. And I agree. Right. You're saying that sarcastically, but you, what you just said is correct. <laughs> Those are not mutually exclusive things. Jimmy and I are gym rats, so we can appreciate some good salt. That's right. Salt tastes way better after you work out. I didn't realize I was hanging way out with a couple better. of gym rats. Yeah. Yep. According to Colin, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> you didn't see the episode? <laughs> I still have I, I still oh, yeah. I still haven't seen your episode. I'm behind on Cop Show. Which is yeah. brilliant. People should watch Colin Quinn's very uh, good. Cop Show. I'm behind though. I apologize. I, I gotta watch that now tonight. All right, so the Jeopardy thing uh was a little awkward for everybody involved. But Al- Alec, uh, or is it Alex? Alec? Alex, Alex Trebek. I think he says Alec, right? No, he says Alex Oh, the other Trebek. guy says Alec, right? Nobody Baldwin. says Alec. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, that's his name. I know. I was trying to figure out which one is Alec and which one is Alex. Alex Trebek. All right, Alex Trebek. Did I ever tell you the story that uh, he married someone from uh, the neighborhood? I don't think so. That I used to know very well. How did it go? God, you don't listen. She lived. She was on my bus every day from pretty much kindergarten through high school. And her crowning achievement is that she married Alex Trebek. Yes, and I was uh, I was good, good friends with her brother, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, know the family. So your dead friend's sister married Alex Trebek. Yes, that is a fact. That's pretty dope. Actually, my brother uh, knew her uh, better because they were in the same grade. But yeah, are they still married? I think so. How's his piece? We've lost touch uh, over the years, Sam. It's been a while. What's he packing? I do know how my friend died, but... How'd your friend die? How did your friend die? Horrific, <laughs> horrific car accident. That's terrible. I'm sorry. And he had some holes in his skull. Holes in oh. his skull? Before the car accident. Well, how oh, do you no. get holes in his skull? He had some issues. Yeah, Ecstasy? He yelled at the doctor, you're in my fucking skull. <laughs> <laughs> he had issues with his brain and the skull. Oh, MDMA? No. But we all still loved him. Too big or his brain was swollen? I don't know. I think they had to try to get some of that liquid out. Every Drain that motherfucker? Oh, I think. Yeah. Or this was a dream. Yeah. This might be a dream now. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I know Alex Trebek's wife now. It was all a dream. I don't know if that was a dream or if I actually know her. Oh boy. Word I, gotta ask, I gotta ask my uh, brother. Uh, I'm a doctor, and I know why Jimmy licks his pretzels. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, no. Because he eats pretzel <laughs> sticks, and it's a phallic symbol. I w- no, no, even the crackers, are, which I, are not phallic symbols. I so wish this was a psychologist like instead of a doctor. Hello? Uh, yeah, Aaron. Yeah, hey, guys. I- What's up, Doc? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, um, your saliva has uh, an enzyme in it called amylase. So digestion actually begins in the mouth. Most people think digestion begins in the stomach. But you start breaking down sugars, uh, complex sugars, into simple table sugar right in your mouth. So if you chew a cracker long enough, it'll start to taste very sweet. So you're probably attracted to the sweet smell of the uh, cracker or the pretzel uh, turning into a, a, a aroma of uh, sweet sugar. Oh, That's see? Like it. I'm just a little, I'm a little animal in the forest who likes sweet yeah. sugar. Oh, we all are. We all are. No, sir, I'm a cute little animal in the forest scurrying for sugar treats. <laughs> That's why I lick a vagina. Yeah. It turns into sugar. It's funny, it, go, it goes from, from human to fish. Oof. 
Wow. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Why were you sniffing and stuff? Why was I sniffing? Yeah. Yeah. You were whispering and sniffing at the same time. Uh, Oh, I I have a little... I have allergies. Okay. Why don't you Um, take care of it? You're a doctor. Don't you get the good stuff? No, I take the -the over-the-counter stuff. Why? That's another thing for you. Why? Well, that is the good stuff. No, I get the sprays Um, and stuff. No, I mean, the Claritin and Zyrtec, they're all very good. Um, Um, And they're generic now, so they're very... Yeah, well... All right. It's pretty severe around here. All right. Thank you, Aaron. Guys, Peace. Oh, thank you. Uh, you have a great show. Thank you thank so much. You. Uh, I, I really enjoyed yesterday. Thank you. Oh, um, you enjoyed yesterday. It was sure. Wow. It took years yeah, of no, my I, life. Those salty I, tears I, tasted like sugar. <laughs> right. they, what the fuck you enjoyed yesterday? <laughs> Who enjoys that? No, thank uh, you, Aaron. I, I'm yeah. fucking around. Thank you, buddy. Let me go to Shane in uh, Texas. Shane. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, there's another clip on uh, Jeopardy where the guy just comes out and says, Donkey Punch is the answer. Can we find that, Sam? Of course. I like when they get a little wild on Jeopardy. They get yeah, a little wild. Up. I'm driving truck. This might, add, this might lead to some Steve Harvey clips if you, if you stay with the program. Because we love when Steve Harvey gets crazy. Um, what's that show again? Family Feud? Yeah, the Family Feud thing. All right, I, I think here it is. That's it. Go ahead, yeah. Who is Yeah. Uh, punch for 800, please. A blow to the back of the neck is the punch named for this animal. Mike. What is a donkey? No. <laughs> Betsy. What is a rabbit punch? Rabbit, yes. <laughs> a uh, punch for 600, punch. please. Quite. <laughs> <laughs> That's stupid. You think Alex knows what a donkey punch is? Yeah, sure, he's been the victim of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shade. Yeah, they're, hey, no punch. Punch. <laughs> they're, they're obviously going for viral clips. Yeah, punch. They, they know how well it works for Family Feud. Because that, that video has a million views. The Donkey Punch video. So, um, Rand Paul, what do you think? Yeah, is that, has he announced for... for is he yeah, it's official. In? He's running for president, and uh, the Utes of America want him. I don't like him for some reason. I don't remember exactly why. There was something about him I didn't... Oh, his TSA, th- he did something I thought felt staged, but... Um, maybe he's the best one. I mean, I'd probably prefer him over anybody else. Yeah, I know the young the young kids are really all about Rand Paul. Right, right, right. Uh, I got a brother in law that's all about it, loves him. I don't know much about him. You know, is how how, how much different is he uh, than his dad? I don't know. Again, I I can't say if he's as conservative with certain things or as liberal. With, I, I I really don't know. A little more mainstream than his dad, I would assume, right? Maybe a little bit. I don't know. That'll be he'll get he'll get a lot of votes. I think, but he gets a lot of votes from people that probably wouldn't normally vote. I would, who, I would assume. Yeah, a vote for him is the either people, some people like him, but there are people who are just voting against the the norm. Um, but who knows? We'll see. Well, a lot of people are excited about that. You hear about Apple? They don't want those fucking lines anymore. Oh, why, yeah, wouldn't, they, why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't they want the? Oh, I know why. And, yeah. I didn't read the story, but I bet you this is the reason. People, uh, I think I know too. The the people that set up the people with the with the uh, yeah the Chinese marketing. yeah oh no not the marketing it's the Chinese people that come and take all the product all the product I mean the marketing isn't that big of a deal they don't care about that because it used to be like people were online because they really cared about the product and then it turned out all these big businesses said no nah, fuck that let me pay you to be on the line you wear a shirt so right. now we're getting free advertising yeah, and, and the person like, is just there for the the big company getting, they do that for like the first 15 people but I mean like when the iPhone came out there were thousands of Chinese people that were sent in to just buy as many phones as they possibly could. I remember you bitching about that. Now that, now yeah, that you waited, and then all those people in front of you. Yeah, they're just gonna do it. There's only a certain amount of Asian people are allowed to wait. I'm surprised that they're going down that road. <laughs> just have a cut off. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Mm. So that's the reason they're doing it. I believe so. But I mean, if you're an Asian guy buying phones for what China, I guess. Yeah. Was that the big one? The big country? I think so. Or just uh, Asian countries in general? I believe it was China. Okay, so how many were you allowed to buy? I think they were paying cash. Five? Five, That's it? At at the initial uh, release of them, I think you were allowed up to five. Oh. But they were busloading people in. Right. Not in my neighborhood, man. I mean, on the Fifth Avenue, on the, the, the staple... Apple store here in the city, it was two blocks worth of just Asian people. They yeah. didn't speak English. Not our neighborhood. I mean, the big store. 
Yeah, but our neighborhood has an Apple store. And That's right. You know, it there's no Asians there, so. Nope. Fifth Avenue. It's all wasps. All white people. Yep, just white. White planes, Apple Wonderful store. white people. Yep. Yep. Just being good. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> just being good. $10 church tippers, huh? Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're all about it now. I finally turned you on the ten dollar uh, fucking uh, offering. What's well, a classy move? Thank you, Sam. I yeah. appreciate it. It's yeah, big bucks. Big bucks. I didn't see anyone else with a ten spot for the basket. A tenor for the basket. <laughs> That's right. A, 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 a nice shiny tenor. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. I mean, are, they have to be taking a taste. They have to be. Well, especially if you're dropping tens in there. I mean, come on. You're the guy. You take the baskets, and now you go in the back of the church. You're telling me you're not taking a taste. Yeah, I'd say, I don't know. He dropped a Even, one in and keep that 10. You're all sitting to there myself. going, wow, I need gas on the way home. There's no ATM machines around. Look at all this cash. You're not taking a quick 20. They live there. Yeah, but then I think it's the people that volunteer with the baskets. They're no. the ones that go back and go to that, to that room on the right side or whatever. It wouldn't be, baskets. Catholic Church wouldn't be in so much trouble. If the basket was the only thing the priest was taking a taste of. <laughs> <laughs> we wish that's, that's all what they were think when they see youngsters. Of, right. I gotta take a taste. Huh? <laughs> Not that tempting $10 bill. Absolutely. It's no. A something else. Yeah, it's the 10 Y O boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I left the church Easter Sunday and one of the priests, who was a wonderful man, by the way, he was wearing a, uh, a violet colored baseball cap. And right away, I was like, oh, my God, what are you doing? It's Easter. Yeah. I, well, that's what he said. Yeah. But I was, he said, I, and he knew people were looking at him like, what the hell? This looks a little, uh, you know. But then again, if you're a pedophile, it doesn't mean you're gay. Because everyone yells at me every time this comes up. I yeah. understand that. Sure. I do understand that. But the hat itself looked, let's just say, a little. Uh, Fashion forward? A little fruity. Oh. So that made people start thinking about everything they, you know, the history of churches. And it was, it was a little weird. And then the guy had to say, no, I got this, you know, for a dollar at the, uh, you know, the mall. Hat store? Mm hmm I just thought he picked a kind of a strange color. But I guess he was feeling festive for Easter. It's Easter. Spring is right around the corner. I you know, but we're all on your high pastels. The point is we're all on high alert with the priest thing. High alert. Yeah, I don't know if uh, violet hats are... Uh... A sign or a dead pedophile giveaway. I, I don't. Would I don't you know. wear a violet hat? I don't know, but my head's big. On Easter, I don't wear violet. I don't wear hats. My head's too big. Would you wear a violet hat, Jimmy, on Easter? I'd, I'd wear one on every day, but Easter. <laughs> <laughs> your Wednesday hat. Yes, I would. It would love be your Wednesday hat. hat. Yeah, yes. why not? Violet hat wearing motherfucker. I'd wear some violet pants on Easter. Sure you would. Why not? A hole in the back. I, I know. No, they'd be so nice. You take dicks. I know what you said. Okay. I know our priests weren't were weren't, weren't pedophiles because they played golf every day at the Huntington Crescent Club. They were way into their golf game. They didn't have time for that other nonsense. I mean, to be fair, if I remember correctly, I think your kid got <laughs> baptized by a priest who was wearing camo fatigues. So, yeah, I thought that was silly too, Sam. Yeah, that didn't I, make I any think sense. all this is silly. The guy got lazy. You could still see the camouflage. Uh, the his, flage, uh, uh, oh, you were there. Yeah. Why am I explaining this? Pants under the robes. He had his robes and stuff on, but you could see his ankles under it. And he was definitely wearing boots and camo pants. <laughs> and then he was trying to tell us the water came from some special place. Mm. You're like, you're dressed up like G.I. Joe under so, your robe. So what, does FedEx just deliver the special water to churches? They just bless it. No, he was saying it actually came from, like, uh, where do they get it? Eli. The Remember that infomercial where you could get a packet of holy water if you called now? Oh, yeah, I remember that. I bet he called a whole bunch of times. <sighs> All right, so Apple wants people to stop camping out. Well, that's so, that, you know, everyone has a, a good opportunity to get their new products instead of it being all just uh, gobbled up by... You're, you're the racist here, saying Asians do it. It's not racist, but I'm saying the people... I'm not saying all Asians do it. I'm saying the people who are doing it are Asians. You said all Asians. No, I mean, I know Asian people that aren't doing it. Maybe. But the people that are... Yeah. Are mostly Asians? All Asians. All. That's what makes a racist. I saw them. Yeah, there's probably another guy in there that's not Asian that's doing the exact same thing. Yeah, but he's not part of the network. Oh. There's a network, an organized network of Asian people that were being brought in... Just to get all the, uh, the products. You see, he didn't even speak English. All right. They just kept saying I was here first. Huh. What happened to uh, Dave Brocky? Who is From that? War? Yeah. 
He died. No, I know that. Oh. We had him in here. He was a great guy, by the way. Uh, family is suing Guar? There's like a million dollars worth of, uh, for a million dollars or so, and they say they took a lot of his personal effects or something? Yeah. Stealing his remains, not his actual remains, right? What remained at his house? They didn't steal his actual remains, did they? I don't know, because I read that they... Or they want you to think that. No, they didn't steal the ashes. Well, it says I know, $1 million they... dollars for allegedly stealing his remains and possessions. They want you to think yes. that Guar took his ashes, basically. God, they're slick in the in the media. Oh, we're part of the media. So You're on the fringe of the media. Thank you. Whatever that means. They're so, saying they didn't steal him, but the attorney had all his stuff for weeks, so they just claimed it. So they have his ashes and his uh, his uh, material. Oh, so effects. they are talking about his yeah, remains. Yeah, they're talking right. about his ashes. His oh, so they are say, claiming that uh, the Banguar took his actual ashes. They say they got it legally. They didn't steal it, but the family's claiming you stole it. So what are they going to do with his ashes? Why does the band I, want I his ashes? Because that's their brother. Uh, is that what it says in the article? No, but that's, you know. He's guessing. It's Guar. Yeah. What, what else did they get from him? Uh... The goal, the suit suggests, right. was to cash in on Brocky's likeness and effects without permission. Maybe put up a guar museum with ashes and guar suits. I don't know. Huh. So they're going to give the ashes back? But the most guarish accusation is that the band's surviving members pilfered Brocky's cremated remains which it keeps under lock and key at Slave Pit Headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> I love Slave Pit yeah, Headquarters. I do too. For reasons the suit does not make clear. Uh, what, happens at, what happens at Slave Pit Headquarters, you think? I don't know. People get eaten by monsters. Ooh. We need some Guar fans to call in. Never really got into Guar, no, but he was cool. He, we had him on a couple he times. Was great. Dave was really a nice guy, and he he did very well on Fox. When <laughs> yeah, he, he was on Red Eye a lot. He did Red Eye and all. He was a he was a very good talker. I think that was a mask, though. No, I don't think. No, I don't think so. I, I think got was, pissed too badly. Really? Yeah, we have a, we have a guest at ten anyway, right? We have Gary Cole coming in. Yeah, promoting Veep season he was great four. That show. Uh, what show? Different strokes. I knew you were going to say that. Well, you did ask. Can you tell me what happens at the slave pit before Jimmy pees yes. his pants? Well, the slave pit is where all these uh, bands get together. Guar, Death Piggy, right. X-Cops, right. Locust Factor, right. Manzria. Why do they get together there? It's a venue? No, I don't know. It's a, it's a, like like a, a record club? Label. Yeah. Oh, it's a record it's label. It's a company. Oh, okay, I didn't yeah. know that. All right, now yeah. I know. All right, Jimmy's got to take a leak. Uh, are you Family. promoting anything today, Jimmy? Just the Rochester thing. My special is April 24th. You know, people already know it. If they want to come, they'll come see me in Rochester at the end of the month. We're doing a Rochester visit soon. Maybe I should uh, team up with you and uh, Kenny. We can yeah. go together. You should say when you do stuff like that, you got to be like, I'll be in Rochester. You already know what it is. Okay. Try it. I'll be in Rochester, and you guys, you know the gig, right? That's not it. Yes, it is. That wasn't it. That's what you said. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It sounded exactly what you said. Yeah. What, what do you want him to say? Oh, I'll be in Rochester. You know what it is? A city and shit. <laughs> Don't add lip. <laughs> no, it's not good. Don't add, no. All right. Why? It's a city and shit. I can see that How on a t-shirt. Yes. I'll be in Rochester. You know what Sam is? Huh? Cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Clemson puts Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity on probation. These fraternity stories are hot. They're hot. Yep. Uh, they had a Crip Miss party. I find nothing wrong with nope. the fraternity having a Crip Miss party. <sighs> the Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity is in trouble again, this time at a, at a Clemson University chapter where members hosted a racially charged oh. Crip Miss party. Frat brothers and their guests dressed like gangster stereotypes at the December bash, posing for photos in baggy pants and bandanas okay. while flashing hand signs modeled after inner city street gangs. Can't they just say black? Fuck, and the bottom line is they're modeling after a gang. Right. Like assholes at college. Colleges just suck. Uh, they really do. We had uh, we had these parties all the time at college. Just You, you think of an outrageous uh, subject and you have a party about it. No different than the uh, the Halloween parties we go to every fucking year where everyone is trying to outdo each other with the outrage. 
Doesn't mean anything in the end. Clemson officials on Monday announced the chapter would spend two years on probation. And like the Oklahoma scandal, the Clemson frat brothers were undone by cell phone images that quickly made their way to sir. Party go uh, party goers posted pictures with Mary Crip Miss Greetings, a play in the California born Crips Street Gang. The fraternity's national organization suspended about two dozen Clemson members after the party, and chapter leaders were booted from office. Oh, what fucking bait? Fraternities, uh, you're just uh, douchebags. Oh, you fucking just pussies. I, I find nothing wrong with this. Uh, you might as well go start at uh, attacking the dorms, because the dorms have these type of parties as well, not just frats and sororities. I, 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 what, what's the problem here? This what would the, they say that the problem is? It's racially charged. The, the guy is wearing a Tupac shirt. Let me see a picture, Sam. Well, they're greedy, hogging the pictures. The, the, look, it, it's just a goof. You can see they're just being goofballs. Yeah, they are. They're just, they're just being gang members. Just, so if they were all dressed like Italians with the fucking hats on and pretending they were mobsters, I guess that would be a problem, too. Right. All right, here comes uh, Gary Cole. Gary Let's Cole. Ask him what he thinks. Uh, really? No, Let's yell at him. <laughs> Let's yell at Gary Cole. Hey, hey, how are you? Sam. Hey, Gary, how are you, buddy? Hey. First time on the show. Hello. How are you doing? Liking the mustache. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. You pull off the mustache well, sir. <laughs> you do? Is that bad? What's that? Is it bad that I say you pull off oh, the mustache no, no. well? Absolutely not. Is it for your character? Uh... Normally, the character on defense, it, it, I've got a beard. Right. But I... You just decided to go I mustache. I for... Because we're on hiatus now, so... Right. I Doesn't it bother? I, I go just, half facial hair. I had to shoot something recently where they taped a mustache on me, and it just felt it's it, fun. It drove really? me. It, I like the look of it because I like looking awful, but it looked bad on because on my face a mustache just doesn't work. I have a, like a chubbier face. I don't know. It works in uh, that picture you sent me. But it itches so much. I don't know how you guys live like that. Was it taped or was it glued? Glued. It? it was a pretty good glue. It smelled like airplane glue. It was a big scene he filmed there, Gary. Well, you know, it wasn't a big. It was like it was a, a, it was a very big scene. But the, the but the the airplane glue. It's like a weird, like a model. You can glue smell, smell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a you get a mild buzz, but then you know that novelty wears off. Exactly. So is your beard taped on, or you grow it? No, I grow the beard. Okay, was that a child's question? I really asked a little <laughs> fucking childish question. It's an inside show business. Question. <laughs> yeah, is your beard real, Mister? <laughs> Sometimes. Did you go to college? I, I I attended college. I did not graduate. College. God, who's my frats and how much trouble they get into? Yeah, yeah they're. Uh, why didn't you graduate? The acting bug. Was I, to well, well, no, I, that's what I was studying. But I I was at a school in a state school where that actually required had required courses right. in order to graduate. And I did the math, and I figured I'd in about. You know, I'd get out in about eight years, so mm -hmm. I decided to exit. I slowed down my college experience. I did an extra year. Oh, you did? I was having so much fun. Yeah. It wasn't even about the classes. I'm like, wait, if I slow down, then I don't have to study as much. I can party a little more, yeah, and I'll still, get, I'll still get the degree. Sure. It was Excellent. brilliant on my part, I think. No, I don't I don't think I ever would have made it out. <laughs> no. What was you going to major? Uh, I was a theater major. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, so I was, and I knew, it. so that was part of it, too. I didn't think I, you know, a degree wasn't going to make a difference. What uh, state college? Illinois State University. Oh, okay. Not U of I, but... Yeah, okay. And, and what was your first uh, acting gig? My first acting gig was theater in Chicago, basically. Okay. Right. Um, and then the first thing I did on camera was a day on... Um, an old... I don't even know what's on the air now. Uh, One Life to Live here oh, in New York so City. Yeah. Is that still on? I don't know. The big one just ended, didn't it? Yeah, they've all, they've all been wiped out. Uh, they finally the got wiped out. Yeah. Days of Our Lives, didn't that end, end recently? They may still be around. They, I don't know. But. They hung in there for a long time, but I think they're finally wiped out. Yeah. I don't really see them on TV during the day. Uh, yeah, whatever. So when you're a theater major, do you, have to, like, do you have to be good, or can you be a lousy actor and be a theater major? Well, if you got uh, if your check clears, I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> okay, you know, there was uh, th this was not a s audition situation. Um, it wasn't I think like it, the Fame School. No, 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 no. <laughs> you didn't have to like you know didn't have to perform to get in. So. Well, Juilliard, you have to too. Right? That's, that's a performing arts school. Don't you have to? Th that's yeah. That that you that, they don't they don't take riff raff there apparently. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you got to be pretty good. <clears throat> You're certainly not riff raff, sir. <laughs> Been in a lot of uh, uh, culty things, I, I should say. Office, yeah. office space is certainly a, a bit culty. Yeah, people are obsessed with that movie. Yeah, no, what? it was um, it. 
when it in the theater it didn't do well, but then it um, it surprised everybody and then just kind of hung on after that. Why did it do well in the theaters? Yeah, I don't. Th- I think it was a weird marketing thing. It was a very strange poster. Nobody understood. I mean, it looked like a guy that was dressed like a right. turkey or something. Right. He had post-its all over him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was that was weird. Um, and um, you know, <clears throat> I just don't think it was sold. You know, probably. What, was well. it was it frustrating at the time because you probably felt like this is a good movie. Why didn't it find its audience uh, initially? Yeah, but that's that that's a, that's the situation with a lot of movies. I mean, you never know if it's gonna if it's gonna have any kind of impact at all. The good news for Office Space, at least then, was that it didn't cost a great deal to make. Right. So, you know, it wasn't looked upon right away as this gigantic, you know, failure because it just it, ba- it basically kind of broke even. Yeah. You know, uh, and then it had a life after that. Oh God, yeah, and then people just quote it all the time. Yeah. Now. How long after did it start to become like a people get become obsessed with it? It was. We noticed all of us. We we kind of compared notes because we've seen each other from time to time because the movie lasts and there's been reunions and stuff. But uh, I noticed that probably a year or so after the movie, people were coming up to me and quoting the dialogue, and I was surprised at that because I thought, well, this you know. This movie went away a long time ago, right. but that was really not the case. That was really movie premiered or opened in February of '99, which was probably, you know, kind of at the peak of DVDs. You right. know, their, their influence. I mean, it, they've since really dropped away, but um, that I think, yeah, for some reason, it you know, the word of mouth spread on that, and that the sales spread from DVDs, and then. You know, all the cable channels like Comedy Central and uh, TBS and stuff right. were, uh, and then they began to run it, you know, to run it constantly, and then it just kind of st- stuck around for a while. Amazing. <clears throat> that was the days of Blockbuster. Yeah. Right. That helped. Blockbuster. No, but that helped you, because after a while, you're like, ah, oh, what else can I Now they're all see? hookah bars. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really sad when you see an old Blockbuster that they still I have. Know. They still haven't sold it yet, and the, I know. the logo it's just is very faded. faded, faded and yellow and... <laughs> Blue sign. The yeah, sidewalk like, has shrubbery that is outgrowing the place yeah. now. I like you because they wouldn't rent porn, so I was always kind of rooting for them to go down. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm, kind of annoyed me. I Don't kinda, you cater to your audience? <laughs> I kind of missed the Blockbuster experience because you, you kind of socialize a little bit. Yeah. You know, you, you ran into some people from the neighborhood, yeah. whatever, it caught up a bit. I don't yeah. know. I, I liked it. I was old school. They would have 500 copies of the new movie. They, they really, yeah, there yeah. was one point where they guaranteed they would have a new movie. They right. finally yeah. figured it out. That, yeah. Wait, we, we probably should make more copies of this stuff right. but uh what were we gonna uh well we're gonna talk about veep, obviously of veep and of course being mr brady oh, uh, right, which right, was right. a big one did you like playing mr brady mr brady was a uh, I, I was a little fearful mm-hmm. only when i put everything on at once you right. know at first i tried the wig on i went uh, okay i can live with this yeah and then I tried the clothes on, but without the wig. Right. And I said, yeah, okay, maybe I can live with this, too. Right. Then I saw it all together on the first day when I was supposed to come out of the trailer. I said, I, oh, boy, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I think I'm going to stay in a trailer before I end my career. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, no, it was handled really well. And uh, Betty Thomas, who I'd known, who directed it. Um, she was in Hill Street Blues, right? She was. Same person? Yeah. Right, exactly. And um, and she went on to direct. You know, she went on to have a really good career directing. Features. She was topless in used cars. Is that right? Did you ever see that with Kurt Russell? I know. No, I. Ha- I mean, I've seen. I've seen some of it only on TV. So Jim- that that scene's probably edited. Jimmy I- loves used cars. It's a funny comedy, but I believe that she's Jack quite- Warden, right? Yeah, oh, Jack Warden played two. Right, 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 yes. right. Yeah. I think she was, and uh, my, uh, Michael McKeon and the guy who played Lenny and Squeaky both. And I and I think there's a moment where her her, her fucking shirt gets caught. On the hood ornament, and it goes up, and her tits come out, and and the guy who played Squeak goes, "Oh, don't you hate women?" It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a funny fucking movie. Yeah, it's a very under the radar. Uh, yeah, comedy. you turned me on to used cars. It's one of my favorite things I, ever. There's some funny lines in that movie. But I think that was I think that was her. No, in, she is. A, I do know for a fact she was in that movie. Right. Um, but uh, you guys, that movie was brilliant. The Brady Bunch. Yeah. She. Well, that was a great. It was a great idea to leave them. Uh, to leave the Bradys trapped, you know, in nineteen, you know, what, sixty nine uh, or nineteen seventy, sure. whatever it is, and then have everybody else regard them as like, you know, right. hideous monsters. Uh, yeah, it was really yeah. funny. So it worked. Oh, there it is. Do you want to see the clip? Yeah, there, Gary. See, uh, sure. Can we turn you on to something today? Uh, there's. What do we got? There, there she is. Oh, nice. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, that shit rather lovely breast. Bravo. Bravo. 
<laughs> I'm guessing that was before Hill Street Blues, too. That was probably... What year was Hill Street Blues? <laughs> Dude, that's, that's, no, that's not her. Where? Up here? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think they're saying that's her. Yeah. I could oh, be there wrong. we go. Okay. Is that there her? Wait, let's, <laughs> let me see this. Oh, is that fast. her? Maybe that's not the one who came topless. Oh, so maybe not. Maybe it's not her. That's not the topless girl. No, is that her? Yeah, this is a scene that was edited. I've never seen that on the. They don't show that on the television. Is that her? That is her. The one that she, dancing. That's her. That's yeah. definitely okay, her. Okay, yeah, she's not topless. Sorry, she's not the one who gets caught topless. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe she is. Topless. No, no, she's not. Cause I remember the scene. Yeah, but maybe uh, they edited he it know, out. I think he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He seems to be she's, she's very getting, knowledgeable. There you go. Oh, oh yeah, but okay. okay. She, right, she's got pasties on. She's not the one I'm thinking of. Though. Okay. Nice. All right. Yeah, it was a fucking hilarious movie. Frank McRae. You know Frank McRae? Uh-uh. No. Black actor. He was in. Um, he played Eddie Murphy's uh, sergeant in um, Forty Eight Hours. The one oh was, right. Okay. He was right, in Nineteen Forty One. Right. right, right. One of those guys that right, you just right. everyone knows his face, like a JT Walsh. You know his face. Oh but yeah, he, he, he's like, in everything. JT was name. great. Yeah, yeah, he was one of those guys that was yeah. in every movie, yeah. and nobody seemed to know his name. Right. So how many did you do? Did you do more than one Brady Bunch or just one? We did two features. Uh, Betty only directed the first one, and then there was a second one, and they did. They took the the, the idea from the show when they went to Hawaii. So it was the Brady's go to Hawaii. I forget the sequel. I Mr. Think it was Hanale called. was in that yeah, one. Yeah, oh, Mr. Hanale. Right, and they, they they get lost in some cave or something, just like the episode. Sure. And then later on, there was a t- television version where the Brady's, uh, I for some reason become elected president, and we move into the White House. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Not a stretch at all. But. I <laughs> no, he's a good man, yeah, good yeah. family man. I didn't yeah. see that one. That was the only one I did not see, Gary. I yeah. apologize. Well, you and most of the rest of the world. So. Hey, was that like a Smokey and the Bandit 3? Like, were the first two <laughs> did okay financially? Cannonball Run 9. Yeah. <laughs> Remember did, the third one where I think like, Burt Reynolds I, wouldn't do it and they only got... Um, oh, they got Paul Williams and... No, the singer. Oh, who, who's who, Jerry Reed. Jerry Reed. Oh, Jerry Reed. Yeah, right. and, yeah, yeah, okay. Who played... Oh, uh, there was one without Burt Reynolds? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, oh, okay. I, I think Burt had like a, a cameo. He agreed to do a cameo probably just because he fucking knew Jerry Reed had a mortgage payment or whatever. He's like, all right, I'll just do it. <laughs> wasn't his cameo he was just in a car? It was awful. It's probably footage they shot in two, and, and they just was, was right, right. And then he was, oh, yeah. he was laughing as Jerry Reed was uh, flying by or something. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. So you knew it was time to move on from the Brady Bunch. But it was, it was a good run, though. Oh yeah, no, we had we had a, a, a lot of fun, and they worked. They worked well for what for what they were. Oh, I love. Yeah, you have to put, the kind of doing it the way they did. It makes it like they're making fun of it, but they're still you know you can't just take it seriously. It's right. No, they, I mean the best idea they had was that they were. It, it was like you know we were actually the straight men, and everybody you know we had Michael McKeon in the first. First one, and right. Gene Smart, and um, you know their reactions to us was what really got you know we got a lot of a lot of mileage out of that, mm-hmm. you know. Because um, when I first heard they were going to do a script, I said, well, you know, my first instinct was, well, why would you do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but they had a, they had a good take on it, and she she made a she made a uh, a real effort to kind of make it look, you know, exactly like the show was shot. I mean, when you were in the house, it was just. You know, we had the AstroTurf backyard. and you know. how, how do they do that? It looked like the exact house. Well, it was. We actually, they recreated everything pretty much to, the, to you know, right down to the, you know, right down to the table lamps. It, um, it was unbelievable. We shot actually on the same stage. Oh, okay. Uh, at Paramount. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they, wanted, they wanted a recreation of not only, you know, not only what it looked like, but the people, too. They wanted that, you know, that memory in everybody's mind. Did they have some of that stuff just laying around? I don't know. I think it probably had gone by the wayside. I, I just imagine. think they recreated it a little bit. Right. I would love to have heard some of those fights that Robert Reed had with Sherwood Schwartz. Because, you know, Sherwood Schwartz wanted to make it this, like, this fucking wacky comedy, which it became. But Mike Reed, uh, Robert Reed wanted to do, like, a serious family drama or, or a show that really gave a message. And he was just disgusted. He was more into drama. Everyone knows yeah, that. Yeah, Roots. That was his thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that all came afterwards. But he did. He had done like he had done like the what was it? The Defenders, I think. Robert Reed. He had done mostly. Yeah, he had done mostly dramatic stuff. And Sherwood was actually around. He was a lot of fun on the set. And he would he kind of recalled some of that. Oh, you. Oh, some really? conversations with Robert Reed, and he would just like you know, Bob, Bob. You know, <laughs> it's just a family with six kids. It's not you know Shakespeare. Come on. <laughs> 
The, uh, they, those guys, we had uh, Barry Williams in recently, and those guys, Christopher Knight, too, and those guys didn't make any money. They're not happy. I mean, well, that was also in the days of that. I think that was, they were even there. That was pre residuals, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But my point to those guys was someone made a lot of money, so they should just give them a couple envelopes as a thank you. They open up their mailbox one day and go, look, you know, this wasn't part of the deal. But, just rely on but, the kind heartedness yeah, of well, show business yeah, executives. But works. I got hundreds of millions in the bank over this show, yeah. so here's a little Christmas gift. Right. Wouldn't that be nice, Gary, in a yeah, perfect world? it would world? be great. It would be great if, you know, producers woke up in the morning and said, you know, I think I'm just going to spread a little cheer to those that deserve it. So. <laughs> I who can I, who can I, how can I make this right? I can make someone's day today, yeah. but I decide that I don't. Want to do no, that? I, I think would rather I, die I think I with like hundred million in the bank. Exactly. Well, some lawyer would advise you against. They go, no, because if you give the money, that implies that you owe the money, and then they're going to come and ask that's for right. more. That's that's opening up a can of worms. Yeah, you can't do it. You can't admit any wrongdoing at all. But they got really. There, no, there was residuals back then. I think too, because didn't Joyce Randolph get them? Like she was the only one from the honeymooners who got residuals because like a <laughs> brother-in-law was a lawyer. Or something. Yeah, but that was later on after syndication oh. deals. I think that wasn't the original run of the, anything. I don't think anybody through the '60s, and you're talking about. Like Dick Van Dyke and right. mm-hmm. Mary Andy Tyler Moore, Griffith. And, seventh, yeah. Well, Mary Tyler, Mary Tyler Moore show afterwards, but but up until 1970 or 71, I don't think anybody well, saw really any money after the fact. Who started? Who was the first show? I well, don't know. I show? just think it was. Uh, I, I really don't know the history yeah, of it, but it. it was all of those. I mean, you know that 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 sixties period up until then. I don't think. I think there was. You know, the, the, whatever the system was, it was little or nothing right. that they received. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna look that up when you're not here, Gary. There you go. I'm not gonna waste your time with this. There you go. I'm guessing Mash. You think it's Mash? Yeah, I mean, it's around that time. I, I, I kind of remember something about Mash maybe being a pivotal point in that because there, there, I think Alan Alda was involved in some mm-hmm. litigation. About about it, right? You know, because that show. Uh, first of all, they had show was on eleven seasons, right? So, and it reran. You know, it was everywhere. It was like everywhere. You know, all day long. There, there's a rain uh, delay in baseball. You turn right, on, right. and half of Mash is showing. They would just throw that throw on. on. Right. But another Sherwood show that nobody saw anything from, which which ran and was funny because it only had three seasons that ran forever and seemingly every day, everywhere in the world was Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island. Island, right? You know, that, but, that, I, it's hard to imagine. It only had three seasons. It, yeah, it feels like they were on forever. Yeah, but uh, that show makes me so angry when I watch Jimmy it. Jimmy hates it. I despise it. You got a problem with it? I do. What's I don't, why? I don't like the laugh track. I don't like the Flintstones for the same reason. It makes me <laughs> fucking nuts. Jimmy's not a fan of the laugh track. No, but I can't. I, I don't know why I don't like it in the, the cartoon. laugh track in there. Maybe because there's nothing's funny, but there's yeah. a laugh track. <laughs> I liked it in the Brady Bunch. Like every time you know Mike would kiss Carol, that play a laugh track. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, everyone else knew. Yeah, they, they knew. Nobody knew anything. Uh, Gilligan's Island was just fun. As a kid, I didn't mind that show. Yeah, it was just it, it was nonsense. But I did. I like when Al. You know, it was just they, they would go so far as you know. I think you know Bob Denver would be acting stupid, and Alan Hale would just turn and actually look in the camera once in a while. Yeah, he, he was so you know. Yeah, he was. He was, he was a good actor. It. Okay, right. What do you want from me? So I've been on an island three years. I want to ask about Seinfeld too. You did that the only episode you did. Oh no, that wasn't me. That's my oh, clone. It was actually, someone said he was an extra on Seinfeld in the Soup Nazi episode. You know what? Somebody told me that yesterday, that I was standing in line with, boy, if, I was in a blackout if that happened, because okay. I, don't, I don't, remember. don't remember this. I do not remember it. Imagine. Well, show him a picture. Let's see if it's how sure. Imagine yeah, yeah. you'd know because you get residual. Imagine checks. if it's you. You yeah, would it's remember not a cardboard were, cut out of me. I think you would remember if you were you in a Seinfeld episode, even yeah, if you I, were just an extra. I would remember. So, it, so it's not going to be you. Imagine if the whole interview was structured around that one fact. <laughs> <laughs> like, all I wanted to do is get into this whole thing that happened on that episode, and, and I just ran you. with it. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, that was a very interesting day. Oh yeah, you could have really just thrown Seinfeld under the bus right there. I guess it wasn't you. No. All right. I don't know how that rumor got started. Does it even look like you, Sam? Can you find the guy? No, it just says it's on your IMDb bio. Okay. Oh, you yeah. appeared as an extra in the classic 1995 episode of Seinfeld, The Soup Nazi. You can be seen, Gary, standing uh, behind Jerry and George. George while they're queuing at the soup restaurant. It doesn't say queuing. It says waiting for soup right here. You just added queuing to sound smart. It says that I'm not reading what you're reading. All right. Right. Okay. Apologize. Have so, no memory of it. <laughs> no, you weren't yeah. in it. You wouldn't remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have to question that. That would be great if it was you, and you'd been in seven other episodes, and you just fucking blocked it out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> just just major scenes and just forgot. Uh, but you're here to promote Veep. 
Season Correct. four. Correct. How's that going for you? Really great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we sh- we had a premiere the other night, and uh, we showed one and two. Uh, and they're really they're really in great shape. And we go on April 12th. Right. And there's 10 more shows for this season, and hopefully... Uh, more down the road. It doesn't hurt to be on HBO. No, they kind of know how to do this. Thing. Yeah, no, it's a great, uh, it's a great spot for it. Uh, they've really HBO's done a really good job with um, not only our show but a lot of shows and um, letting you know the creators just kind of you know get it off the ground and right. stay out of the way and develop them the way they want to develop them. Yeah, right. they're so much better than everybody else. I mean, you'll, you'll find like I guess Cinemax has like one good show or Showtime will have a couple ones, but it seems like HBO consistently has just the best shit. No, they've got whatever their you know whatever their system is of development. They've 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 got a handle on it. They're you know they they pick good shows and. Um, and once they're off the ground, they're they're also very good at, at getting them out there and, and marketing that and, and that's a that's a tough deal today. It's not just a slam dunk, you know, you have to Really figure out how to get it out there to people. I, and I can't think of uh, a bad HBO show. They haven't had one bust. There's been some that haven't gone on as long. Like, like but in general, they're all... hung about a male escort or something. I don't know if that was yeah, HBO, but, but they that, still have a good run. Bad, and, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know they usually you know, like that show was. I think that lasted about two years, and it just was you know numbers weren't where they sure. wanted them. But it was still, but it was still an interesting show, right. and uh, you know provocative. As yeah. well, it just you know didn't do the business that they needed at the at the moment. Lucky Louie only did one season. You know, right. there's a few, there's right. very few. Jimmy was on Lucky Louie. You didn't That's, recognize that him? was Louie's first show. Yeah, what well, well, had like the almost like the honeymooners yes. looking set. Yes. Yeah, I liked that show. Jimmy was on it. Yeah, yeah, he was, was a regular. Fatter. Yeah. <laughs> I was fatter. He was a little chubbier back you then, are. so maybe that's why you don't recognize him as being boy. a big HBO star. Yes, <laughs> Jimmy's a big HBO. But star. But it was like a really da- kind of a, a dumbed down set, as far as like you know, you, dolling it up and making it beautiful. You think that show would work now? Now that Louis fucking oh, huge, well, Louis does work now, now he could probably yeah. But I liked it. It was a really good show. Yeah. But maybe it was just too dark for people to oh, accept or something. There See, look, Mike Haggerty. Oh, you know Mike? Yeah, I know Mike from Chicago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's yeah. a big Chicago yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, show him Jimmy. The, the, I'm, just yeah, no, I'm looking yeah. at the three of them. Yeah, me much, much fatter, much fatter. He, I remember when he first got cast. Uh, how funny he like he was the only guy just destroying in the table. He's a funny bastard. Yeah, he Mike's played great. Louis's friend uh, Mike. You know, right. and I haven't seen him since. I'm sure he's working and doing something. Yeah, no, he's around. I, I, I we, um, yeah, I've seen him on auditions a lot for stuff. Oh, you, have you? Do you still have to audition? It depends what it is. This in that case, Mike and I were we were. It was a uh, it was a voiceover an- animation uh, audition for a new Fox, uh, and I think a, fo- a show that Seth from McFarland was producing. Mm. Did you get uh, it? Because you have an amazing. Radio I did not voice. get it, and I don't think he got it. I I, saw, I ran into Mike. I said, "Who got it?" He said, "Nobody got it." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Seth's doing it. <laughs> uh, what are we going to see on Veep this this season? What can you tell us? Well, she is she is the president. She was appointed last year, right? Uh, only because the the real president had to to kind of excuse himself because of domestic situation. Uh, so she's in a kind of a, a funny spot, which is great for the show. She's the president, but she's also running for president uh, for this for the following term. So there's going to be more of that um, campaigning, and uh, basically, it, it's the, the show is about her and her staff, and I guess what we've learned about political staffs is they spend 90% of their time just trying to put fires out. Right. You know, because there's going to be mistakes. Um, the question is, how do they either try to erase them or cover them up? Right. You know, and they sometimes make things worse, and, you know, that's normally what we do. Mm-hmm. Hence the comedy. Did you, talk, <laughs> did you talk to anybody who had done this for a living? You must have spoke to people. We went, it's funny, we went to, last year, we went as a cast to the uh, correspondence dinner. Oh, wow. Wow. That was, yeah, it was, it was wild because we kept running into people who would identify themselves uh, and which character they were in the show by what their, you know. What so their, who was yours? I didn't run into too many of me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the men, wanted, they were there like, were saying, yeah, I'm kind of like that Dan guy who's like on our show is like, you know, perfect looking dude, you know, very energetic and, you know, really sharp. And then there's a guy, the character that uh, is uh, named Jonah on the show, who's like a total, you know, is annoying to everyone. Right. And of course, nobody identified nobody, themselves yeah. with that. Yeah. They, everybody thinks 
that the the uh, the characters on a show are somebody else in Washington, not them. Right. But you know, they a lot they're they're tuned into the show and they they follow it pretty pretty I, hardly. I just assume if you do a show about the White House, they let you go there and you know kind yeah, of yeah, wander around. The door, and, yeah. Yeah. She actually, Julia actually taped a bit for the correspondence dinner in the White House wow. with uh, Joe Biden. Wow. So that was a pretty big deal. What, what did she have to say about Joe Biden? Uh, they're, they're friendly, you know. I love Joe Biden. Yeah. He, he, he seems just like a frat, frat guy. Yeah. He, you know. He's always just having a good time with everything. Yeah. He, no, doesn't take, a, he, he seems to not He's take, a happy, grateful man. He doesn't take anything seriously. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying I like him because of politics or anything. I just like him yeah, as, no, a, I've always as a liked person. Him. Yeah, just, just, I mean, I like his demeanor. I like how he gets way too close to everybody yeah, yeah. and kisses inappropriately and hugs. Yeah. And, oh and even God. Obama sometimes, you know, kind of tosses it off. I heard him a couple times say, well... Yeah, you know, like all oh, that. You know Joe. Joe, right? Exactly. You know, I don't. Yeah, it works. Cause you that, know, you know what Joe meant by that. Because I think, I mean, I don't know. Obama started with some charisma, but he's not. He's just kind of a yeah, personality-wise. So, I think. Yeah, so it's but good I, to have what, a Joe Biden it, that's, to, to pump it up. It's it, the media uh, has you know, knocked him down. It, well, I just think it's the, it's the machinery. I don't know that it's him at all. I just think it's what you know what you get twenty four seven, and you know, I, I, it, that that's tough to spin either way. Right. I think yeah. the vice president too. Like we've talked about this before. A lot of times, the vice president, I think they they really like when the vice president screws up a little bit because it will take the heat. It's almost like it can be the punching bag before you get to the yeah, top. It's like, a diversion, sure. Yeah, Quail, Decoy. Or Bush Senior, or uh, or uh, who is oh, Gore was boring. Whatever it is, they always find a, a label to put on the vice president, which is pretty negative. You never hear really positive labels about vice. Well, president. it's a thankless job. That's yeah. actually why they, they initially that was the best. That that's why they chose that job for the show because it was a. You know, it's a job that seemingly should, it sounds like it's really powerful. You know, it's just a heartbeat away from the presidency. But in reality, if you're not sitting in the presidency seat and you're the vice president, you have virtually no power. Mm -hmm. there's, there's many more people with positions in the government that can actually put things in place and put things in motion than the vice president. Right. right. You know, they've got a tiebreaker in the, in the, in the Senate and all that. But, you know, other than that, they're, they do a lot of... Photo opping and you know showing up where the president doesn't want to show up. It seems like a real easy job and a fun one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a great yeah. a lot of travel. It's good gig, but it's not a. It's not. It, you know, once in there, I, I guess it's not a real ego filler. Oh, you know okay. I mean? Got it. Was an awesome seat though for the State of the Union address. Yeah. yeah. Fucking best seat. Uh, apparently, Gary Cole was not in the Soup Nazi episode. I think we found the clip. Yeah. Then why would people think photo. that's you? Yeah, I mean a, a photo. Is that you? Uh, no, it's not. No, of course it's no. not. Oh, no, it's I, I, I kind of sit from, I kind of get it from this angle. You like do. That maybe that's yeah, maybe. Right. But we got to take uh, one office space uh, question sure. from John in Missouri. Uh, John. Yeah, I got a question. Um, I just want to know how much uh, ad libbing, or if any, did you do during office space? I did very little. Um, there was ad libbing during office space, but. Most of it didn't come from me. All of my all of my mm's and yeahs were, you know, counted specifically by Mike Judge. I do know that one ad lib that made it in, which everybody likes, is John McGinley saying, uh, "Michael Bolton, love the guy. I celebrate his entire catalog." Yes. Oh, that, that's was, yeah. a, that was an ad lib. Yeah, oh, that was no that was McGinley. Yeah. That, that, well, that's a good one right there. Uh, let's say <laughs> hi to Anne Marie in Long Island. Anne Marie, are you still there, Anne Marie? Oh, hold on, let me see if I did this right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got you. Go ahead. Huge okay. fan. Okay. Hi, guys. Love, love the show. Glad, uh, to, glad to finally be on. Great. Uh, Gary, I have been watching you since Midnight Caller. Oh, Lord. That's wow. When, that is when you hooked me in, and I've been watching your career ever since. I love you on The Good Wife, and I got to know which part, which of all your parts uh, is your personality to a T? Like, what are you the closest as? Who am I the closest to, would you say? Is yes. that what you, is, Yes. Uh, well, Mike Brady definitely. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you know. She loves it. Yeah, I would say that 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 most closely captures my demeanor. <laughs> She's loving your answer. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> you just love uh, Gary Cole, huh? 
I do. He's just, he's phenomenal. I've been watching him for years. I just went through, it was driving me crazy. I couldn't think of the name of Midnight Caller. And I just did IMDb, went all the way back. It was Nighthawk. I, yeah, right. I That's... couldn't believe that I watched it that many years ago. It is that many years ago. It is true. How many years ago is that? That was, Midnight Caller ran from 1988 through 1991. No kidding. Yeah. I watched every episode. Wow. It was phenomenal. Oh, that's... Yep. Thank you very much. All right. What was Midnight Caller? Midnight Caller was a show on NBC um, about a guy who was a he was a former cop, and then he hosted a radio show. Logical progression. <laughs> Uh, and he was his nickname was the Nighthawk. The show was Midnight Caller, but the character's nickname in the show was the Nighthawk because he was on from midnight to three. Right, and you play with it was like a talk a call in. Yeah, show? it was a call in show, and but although you know we we stretched plausibility because it was a call in show, and yet you know in the middle of shows inevitably somehow he had to leave the studio and solve crimes. Fight sometimes crime. be back for the sign off. It was kind of like a superhero. Oh. Exactly. Was you it know. good? Billy put on Inagata DeVita. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back in no time as soon as I get these bad guys, and I'll be back for the sign-off. I used right. to do just that, Gary. Just to go Exactly. Back. See, you know. I, I worked at a tiny station in uh, Geneva, Geneva, New York, CQ102, and I was so bored. I was just playing records. I was like, this is the dumbest, easiest L- job Late ever. at night? I mean, what? Uh, late at night, overnights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I would put on a, a longer record, and I would go to the McDonald's and get through the drive through <laughs> and back before the song was over. And I would challenge myself. So. Sure. How, would, how close you could push it? I would it? challenge it. Yeah. It, was, it was close, trust me. But yeah. I would. it would be about a six or seven minute And what thing. long plays would you use? Do you I remember don't any remember of those? anymore. I, th- I believe one was Stairway to Heaven. I there went with go. Stairway to Heaven. I'm trying to remember the others. Stairway uh, is, yeah, I know that from because I, I dial it up all the time. Stairway is about eight minutes. Wow, you know this eight shit still, minutes, huh? Yeah. I would push play and I would just, I would be gone. Yeah. I think I even started the car before, pulled it up to the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's coming back to me a little bit, but it pulled it off. Nice. I had a couple times where it was a little dead air, but like I said, it was the middle of the night. No, who cares? Right, right. How about Alice's Restaurant? That's a good Alice's long one. Alice's Restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> fucking despise that song. You don't like when they play I, that every Thanksgiving? I hate it. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever hated anything more than the tradition. I don't that mind that they song. play it. I mind that they promote it like it's the greatest thing that has ever happened to radio. Don't forget, once again, this year. Yeah. Who cares? It's really just play bad. it. So why did the show end? Did it not get ratings, or did they just... It uh, It did well. Not a good it, run. it was a moderately successful show. It, it went for two seasons and then it had the dreaded uh, time slot switch. Oh no, from when to when? We were on Tuesday nights at 10, primo spot. Not Fridays. We went to, yes. Oh hello. boy. Hello, Graveyard mm. Friday at 10. And I remember our producer kind of whistling in the dark saying, I think this will be a good change for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, I think we'll find another audience. I said, yeah, the, you mean the one that's not home? Right. Yeah. Yeah. How Why do they, do they do that to shows? Like, what works on a Friday? Well, when, in our case, they put a little show in there. They were trying to launch, uh, doing a little experiment. And they actually promised us, well, we'll probably, you know, you'll, you'll probably get your slot back. But we're going to test this little show here. It's called Law and Order. Oh. <laughs> so they, it do? they stayed there for the next... <laughs> 20 years, and we... You're still waiting for the I'm, call. <laughs> You're ready I'm running back. around still. There you go. Well, well that's, that's a lot of crime. Show. You, yeah. you could solve a, lot, uh, solve a lot of crimes in 20 years. That's right. Yeah. A lot, lot to choose from. Imagine they call you back, filing. All right, we're ready. We're yeah. ready to bring uh, you yeah. back to the, we're the, back. the suite. Well, uh, no, it's just getting irritating. Now we're going to have to put you back on. I, like, I kind of like the idea that the cop solves crimes. And what do you mean Gary's got to go? I feel like this is going well. We're enjoying Gary. Yeah, yeah we're maybe. enjoying Gary. How come he wants to leave? What? This isn't... I just feel like we're just hanging out with them, though. All right. Veep, season four. Gary. <laughs> it's uh, Sunday night, 1030 on HBO, of course. We uh, forget uh, uh, you know, that we're actually doing something here. Hey, yeah, I thought, I thought that's we the way to here. do it, though. I right? thought we were just hanging, and then yeah. we'll decide when it's over. Yeah. I didn't know we were on a... A, a, a time thing. Yeah, well, there's other PDDW before, and he has no, other promotion to do, I guess. Right? They're running me. They're running yeah. me around. Yeah, Veep, like Jimmy said, season four premieres Sunday at 10.30 on HBO. Obviously, you don't really need to promote this show. It's doing very you just well. Tell yeah, but we'll do it on. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to tell them when, which is 10.30 I think that's Sundays. all you have to do, right? Is just tell them when. Yeah. Period. And you're April back 12, at 10 o'clock 10 hour. Yeah. Yeah. All right. right where we need to be. Where you belong. Yeah. All right, Gary. Thank you. This was a pleasure for us. I Thanks for having me. I really appreciate us. it. Gary Cole. I think we're done, too, yes. Jimmy. JimNorton.com for his comedy Yeah, I'll dates. be in Rochester next week, and then the Borgata. Just check my website. All right. Thanks, guys. For the, the stall that's empty. And wouldn't take her long to use it. Once she got in there, door shut. Yeah, big fat pants dropped. <laughs> yep. <laughs> to un- unload some carbohydrates. Yeah. Sun's out, gun's out. Y- you think she carb loads this one over here? She would carbo load, sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, 
All right, let's uh, do the clip from Jeopardy. Yeah, this is good. Uh, in life for 400, please. In common law, the age of this signaling adulthood is presumed to be 14 in boys and 12 in girls. Tom? What is the age of consent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Tom made mistakes. There's no reason to ridicule him. <laughs> What? Don't they go over this shit before they actually decide to use it on the show? Wouldn't someone like kind of put their hand up and go, "Look, there's a possibility that someone's going to say what is uh, the age of consent." They probably be and psyched. that's going to make it awkward for everybody. Or are they doing the Steve Harvey thing where they want just crazy answers now, so they go viral on the internet? Probably. You think? <laughs> Although you'd think if it said the girl twelve, right? Yeah, I was. I yelled, "That's too high, Tom." <laughs> He was off by 10 years. 10 years? Sure. I don't think the average Jeopardy contestant thought that was the age of consent. What was the answer? I don't. I can't even Two. figure it out. No, I mean... <laughs> not the question. <laughs> what was the answer to the question? I can't even I figure believe. out. I'm going to guess pu the beginning of puberty. Puberty? puberty? Yeah. But I, a common law, I guarantee you, he was thinking common law marriage. That that's probably what he was thinking. That, that doesn't sound as crazy. When he's in common law, he probably was thinking, "Oh, marriage, age of consent." You know, it doesn't sound crazy for a twelve-year-old girl to to you be married. Get it does. Marriage to a twelve-year-old? No, but when he when he saw common law and the ages of fourteen and twelve, that was probably just what he thought the age of consent to get married. He right. was wrong. Yeah, he was, but I, I don't think that's as crazy a stretch as it seems. Girls are reaching puberty at twelve. It's the chicken. Yeah. Wow. Uh, go, go back. I want to see that again. I want to see the people laugh. You know, if there's grass on the field. Yeah, you get in there, you lick, <laughs> you lick the field. Uh. <laughs> you throw the field out. It's too old. You know what they say. If there's grass on the field, Sam. Yeah, it's too uh. old. <laughs> get rid of that grassy field. Yuck. <laughs> I like to play on a nice, a nice clean field. Nice driveway. Yeah, nice smooth driveway. Very smooth driveway. Yeah. Park. Freshly paved. Yeah. Yeah. Park my car in there, even if it doesn't function. Oh, oh God. It's limp. Yeah, you oh, can, God. Get a cram oh, yeah. your soft car into a little tight All garage. Right. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> little garage is snug. Oh, uh, so uncomfortable. That's best. To sit here and be all uncomfortable. <laughs> feel icky. <laughs> Make us all feel icky. <laughs> Uh, yes, we know South Park did an episode totally destroying Scientology. Yeah, I heard it was really good. It's a, it's a, it's a very funny episode. Uh, can we hear that again? Yes. In life for 400, please. In common law, the age of this signaling adulthood is presumed to be 14 in boys and 12 in girls. Tom? What is the age of consent? <laughs> no. <laughs> you think... You think he's mortified today? Yeah. Yeah, uh, his it, answer has gone viral. But it doesn't seem, I honestly, common law, age of this, the age of consent is something you say. Um, you know what I mean? You don't say the age of puberty. You say the age of consent. Yeah. And then signaling adulthood, that's actually not as crazy an answer as they're making it out. Yeah, but everybody who plays Jeb, all the answers are weird like this. Like, none of them are actually phrased the way anybody would phrase anything. I'm more surprised that uh, Jeopardy's still on the air. Yeah. Who watches that? My dad. He I enjoys play. a good Jeopardy? Yeah. He loves to he watch Jeopardy. He plays it at home. My son is a... <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't answer that in the form of a question. Sure so you can. One incorrect. with an N, one with an F. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> can, can we... Could you, like, walk us through his Jeopardy watching? Does yeah. he set up his treats and stuff? Like... Is it kind of a ritual, or he and does he do the Wheel of Fortune uh, thing? No. It was a little awkward for everybody involved. But Al Alec, uh, or is it Alex? Alec? Alex Trebek. I think he says Alec, right? No, he says Alex Oh, the other Trebek. guy says Alec, right? Nobody Baldwin. says Alec. Alec Baldwin. Yeah, that's his name. I know, I was trying to figure out which one is Alec and which one is Alex. Alex Trebek. All right, Alex Trebek. Did I ever tell you the story that uh, he married someone from uh, the neighborhood? I don't think so. That I used to know very well. How did it go? God, you don't listen. She lived, she was on my bus every day from pretty much kindergarten through high school. And her crowning achievement is that she married Alex Trebek? Yes. And I was, uh, I was good, good friends with her brother, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, I know the family. So your dead friend's sister married Alex Trebek? Yes. That is a fact. That's pretty dope. Actually, my brother uh, knew her uh, better because they were in the same grade. But yeah. Are they still married? 
I think so. Has his piece. We've lost touch uh, over the years, Sam. It's been a while. What's he packing? I do know how my friend died, but... How did your friend die? How did your friend die? Horrific, <laughs> horrific car accident. That's terrible. I'm sorry. And had some holes in his skull. Holes in oh. his skull? Before the car accident. Well, oh, how do you no. get holes in his skull? He had some issues. Yeah, Ecstasy? He yelled at the doctor, you're in my fucking skull. <laughs> <laughs> he had issues with his brain and the skull. Oh, MDMA? No. But we all still loved him. Too big or his brain was swollen? I don't know. I think they had to try to get some of that liquid out of him. Drain that motherfucker? I think. Yeah. Or this was a dream. Yeah. This might be a dream now. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I know Alex Trebek's wife now. It was all a dream. I don't know if that was a dream or if I actually know her. Oh boy. Word I gotta ask. I gotta ask my uh, brother. Uh, I'm a doctor, and I know why Jimmy licks his pretzels. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh no, because he eats pretzel <laughs> sticks, and it's a phallic symbol. I no, no, even the crackers, are, which are I, not phallic symbols. I well. so wish this was a psychologist like instead of a doctor. Hello. Uh, yeah, Aaron. Yeah, hey guys. Hey. What's up, Doc? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, um, your saliva has uh, an enzyme in it called amylase. So digestion actually begins in the mouth. Most people think digestion begins in the stomach. But you start breaking down sugars, uh, complex sugars, into simple table sugar right in your mouth. So if you chew a cracker long enough, it'll start to taste very sweet. So you're probably attracted to the sweet smell of the uh, cracker or the pretzel uh, turning into a, a, a aroma of uh, sweet sugar. Oh, That's see? Like I'm just a little, I'm a little animal in the forest who likes sweet yeah. sugar. Oh, we all are. We all are. No, sir, I'm a cute little animal in the forest scurrying for sugar treats. <laughs> That's why I lick a vagina. Yeah. It turns into sugar. It's funny, it, go, it goes from, from human to fish. Oof. <laughs> 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 wow. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Why were you sniffing and stuff? Aaron? Why was I sniffing? Yeah. yeah. And you were oh, no, whispering I... and sniffing at the same time. Uh, oh, I, I have a little... I have allergies. Oh, okay. Why don't you um, take care of it? You're a doctor. Don't you get the good stuff? No, I take the over-the-counter stuff. Why? That's another thing for you. Why? Well, that is the good stuff. No, oh, I get the sprays um, and stuff. Have, no, I mean the Claritin and Zyrtec, they're all very good. Um, um, and they're generic now, so as he sniffs. they're yeah. very inex yeah. Well all right. they're pretty severe around here. All right. But, uh, thank you, Aaron. Guys, Peace. Oh thank you. Uh you have a great show. Thank you thank so much. You. Uh, I really enjoyed yesterday. Thank you. Oh, um, you enjoyed yesterday. It was sure. Wow, it took years yeah, of no, my uh, life. Those salty tears I, tasted like sugar. <laughs> right. they, what the fuck? <laughs> he enjoyed yesterday. Who enjoys that? No, thank uh, you, Aaron. Was, I, I'm yeah. fucking around. Thank you, buddy. Let me go to Shane in uh, Texas. Shane. Hey, how's it going? Uh, yeah, there's another clip on uh, Jeopardy where the guy just comes out and says, "Donkey punch is the answer." Can we find that, Sam? Of course. I like when they get a little wild on Jeopardy. They get yeah, a little wild. symbolic, and they know that Elijah ain't showing up in that motherfucker. It's more of a tradition. That's if he just showed up to eat some guy. I'm Elijah, and you're like, how do we know you're Elijah? How many how many people have sat down in his seat not knowing? Yeah. And then what happens in the house? Yeah, are, 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 are there jokes to be had? Oh, look at <laughs> oh, who is. He yeah. thinks he's Elijah. Look at the big shot. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mister yeah. Big Shot, the goyim. Hey, you Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that shit happens. Yeah, Elijah Schlesinger. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, these are educated people who do this now. Some will say it's ritual. Some will say it could literally happen. So you got people that know that it's a, is symbolic, but there are people. The hardcore ones are like, no man, it could possibly happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Look at uh, Mormonism. He continues. There are uh, there are ideas that are as space exotic within Mormonism as there are with Scientology, and it's more accepted because it's a little older than Scientology. So, are we just more accepting of something that is older? What do you think of Neil deGrasse Tyson's comments? And then you post on their fucking website, and people read it, and then they start yelling and screaming at each other, yeah. hating each other. You calling just poopy heads opinions? and shit. So that's ah, an it's interesting. I yeah. sort of believe that as well. You know, it's easier to accept a, something that is uh, very Older. very old. Yeah, but I I know that that one of the reasons too is that we cannot see interviews with Christ. You know, he saw interviews with Christ and he said dumb shit. You look like, right. Well, you saw that his hair was fucked up or whatever, but right. It's easier to have faith in something that is seen as oh, mm -hmm. but this is just to me is too it's just too new. Right. 
But yeah, maybe that he's right about it. it's a religion or a cult. I mean, what's the difference? We're going to get Neil deGrasse Tyson on the phone? Uh, no, he's going to be on the show on April 23rd. Well, that's too late. Yeah, we could talk... Uh, this is hot now. Yeah, come on, Iraq. What the fuck? Piece of garbage. What's he going to talk about on the 23rd? His about awesome a black show. hole. Ooh. Yeah. Watch out. Yeah, he might fall in. Mm. <laughs> what if you uh, walk by a bunch of ants? Shut up. We can talk about cookie people. We can talk about asteroids. They scare the fuck out of me. Hey, when's that astronaut coming in? Huh? We have an astronaut coming in here. That's right. When? Astronaut? Um, mm, is that tomorrow? We got an astronaut I don't think coming it's in. Tomorrow. Next okay. week, I think. I oh. think it's next week. I think it's the same day as Louis C.K. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very happy to announce that Louis C.K. <laughs> will be doing our show next Wednesday, I think. With the season premiere of uh, Louis uh, happening tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. I saw the first four episodes. They are excellent. I, I believe he's gone even darker with this season. Our own Bob Kelly did a wonderful episode. Yeah, it was great. His acting was great. He plays Louis' brother. Yeah, Bob Kelly is going to become an actor. Yeah. I mean, he is an actor already. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, but he's going to be one of these guys you're going to see in a lot of shit, man. Yeah. He is on his way. Hopefully he'll become a comedian, too. That'd be nice. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> a double threat? Yeah. All right, let's go to uh, Jeopardy there, Sammy. Oh, you got it. Got a contestant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saw this? I know this guy. <laughs> Good friend of mine. Ah, uh, yes. Real character. Yeah. So uh, what's the backstory? Jeopardy gets awkward with contestants understanding uh, uh, of consent law. Well, pretty. A, uh, a question was asked. Mm-hmm. And uh, you should pay attention. You know, you're supposed to answer in the form of a question. Yeah. Yes. And the question that the man answered in. Uh, it was a little bit embarrassing if he thinks it was accurate. Who's this rotund woman? She would be Iraqa. a contestant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> I love the quick apology. <laughs> love it. Yeah, she's... Uh, who's the other one? She looks like Lady Di. She, well, from 15 years ago, yes. Yeah, piggy lady. Why is she so rotund, you think? A lot of brain food, I guess. Yeah. You think she would be fighting for a stall upstairs with uh, oh, the yeah. big oh, shot yeah. from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think they would be fighting over? It was brought to my attention that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's brilliant, who's smarter than all of us, uh, he commented about Scientology. He defends Scientology. That's right. Neil deGrasse Tyson defends Scientology. But he adds uh, Christianity and other religions are just as crazy as Scientology. That's how he's defending this whole thing. He was asked about the uh, the documentary uh, Going Clear and uh, he says this. You have people who are certain that a man in a robe transforms a cracker into the literal body of Jesus saying that what goes on in Scientology is crazy. Okay? Let's realize this. What matters is not who says who's crazy. What matters is we live in a free country. You can believe whatever you want. Otherwise, it's not a free country. It's something else. He, uh, he continues. Where's his other quotes? Because then they explain the... Uh, the Scientology a little bit, but then he goes, I don't care what the tenets are of Scientology. What are the tenets, Jim Norton? What are the tenets of Scientology? I don't really know what they are, to be honest All right. with you. I don't know enough about it. All right, let's uh, read that paragraph. People that live on, in the building? On tenets. Sam, go up again. I'm sorry. Uh, what? Uh, let's see. The tenets of Scientology state that... Oh, the, the, oh, this is the creation story. All right, why don't you read the creation story? Well, it's the... the the, the way they phrase it is that uh, the tenets of Scientology state that the dictator of the galactic confederacy known as Xenu brought billions of his people to Earth in a spacecraft 75 million years ago and killed them, and that those spirits of those aliens bring harm to modern-day humans. Those are the Thetans. Wow. Because they, they froze... Yep, he lived in hell. <sighs> they Get froze it? all the people, wow. the aliens, right? and then they dropped them onto Earth, and they went into volcanoes. Wow! And then the volcanoes erupted. Yeah. And then all those dead people started, uh, the souls of those dead people went into every newborn and still goes into every newborn. So you sign up for Scientology because right. they get those dead people Are we breathing, out of your body. We're breathing that shit in right now? Thetans. They're right already now? inside you. Yes. I got an air purifier. It's not, it, they're already inside you. Why? By just breathing? They, they went inside you when you were born. Oh. 
So we didn't have a choice on this one? No, you have to go to Scientology. They get them out. Oh, that's, that's logical. <laughs> How do they get them out, though? Uh, through their practices. Auditing and stuff. Auditing. Auditing. What is that? Like, giving money? No, well, you have to give money, yeah, but auditing is, is basically they, they interview you. Oh, that's you where you and, hold the things? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. All right. And so they that, change your memories. Wow. That's right. That could be nice. That's right. I got some bad memories. I'm still trying to get out <laughs> of my fucking head. Easy. I don't care what the tenets are of Scientology. They don't distract me. I don't judge them, and I don't criticize them, Tyson says in this interview. Oh. In fact, according to Tyson, Scientology actually isn't any more bizarre than any other religion. Who is to say that one religion is rational and another isn't? It looks like the longer those thoughts have been around, the likelier it is to be declared a religion. If you've been around 1,000 years... You're a religion. If you've been around 100 years, you are a... Anyone? Crackpot. A uh, cult. A cult. You Jim Norton. Tyson says, or adds, I'm not going to sit here and say Scientology is a, is an, a, a legitimate religion and other religions are uh, legitimate religions. Oh, uh, illegitimate religion, okay, and the other ones are legit, gotcha. They're all based on belief systems. If you attend a, a, a setter, a cedar, a, set, uh, a cedar, How right? do you spell it? S-E-D-E-R. Seder. Seder, Seder, Seder. Seder, right. Seder. 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 If you attend a, a, a Seder, there's an empty <laughs> chair sitting right there, and the door is unlocked because Elijah might walk in. Yeah, that's true. That's just being courteous. Is it? Yeah. Do people, do, do, do people feel like silly gooses as that chair is empty? I think this totally. He doesn't watch Wheel of Fortune. That's I mean that's for the masses. They they go together though. I think I think they, seven it, and seven thirty. See, E Rock knows. How, why do you know that too? Because it's always joked upon. It's syndicated at those hours around the country. Oh, you know he's not going to watch Wheel of Fortune. That's for uh, stupid people. That's for the dunderheads. He watches Jeopardy while my mom makes dinner, and he asks her every five minutes if she's ready for him to put ice in the glasses. You ready for ice? No, Jerry. What? Every day for the last 31 years. What's it, what does your OCD psychotic family do? You ready for ice? Mm-hmm. No, not yet. It's his job to put ice in your glasses for dinner? He puts ice in the glasses for him and my mom. Because they drink iced tea every single dinner. They, she brews tea. <laughs> and every single dinner... They have iced tea, and he puts the ice in the glasses. Why can't people get their own ice? No why wonder do? Sam's a kook, though. That's why Sam's an eating kook. The whole thing is an OCD <laughs> fucking psychotic house of horrors. And you can't do it early because then the ice will melt. But if the food's ready and there's no ice, then everything gets held up. How is it held up? It takes seconds to fill your cup with ice. So he goes, are you ready for ice yet? And how, Not yet. And does he, how, how much ice? Does he, half the glass? No, it's about three quarters of the he glass. He goes three quarters. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's no a, kidding. It's, it's legit iced tea. It's not bullshit sweetened. Like, they make tea and then they ice it. So, let's say dad wants a second cup of iced tea. Does he dump his ice out? No. And refresh the ice cubes? They put a couple more cubes in, okay. maybe. Gotcha. But does not dump out the ice. But that's really his job every day for the last 31 years? Yeah. Ready for we're ready for ice yet? Not yet. What if it's Final Jeopardy? Or or your mom at this point has it all timed out like, okay, I, I, the dinner's got to be ready right around the Final Jeopardy question, and then Jerry could come in and fill the uh, the cups with ice. Yeah, it's not going to conflict. Oh, my God. That's so weird, man. That is fucked up. Yeah. Sometimes my dad will snack. We went over there the other day, mm-hmm. and there were Doritos crumbs in the peanut butter. <laughs> and he was dipping it because he had run out of like Tostitos and salsa. <laughs> so, he so he just found stuff <laughs> that rules. And I saw him, and I know he was dipping Doritos in the peanut butter jar. <laughs> Coke, <laughs> Jerry. I'm like, what are you Love doing, Jerry? I, I, it's great. Have you had it? It's it's delicious. He might have came up with a new snack. You never know. Yeah, Doritos, Doritos and, and peanut, peanut butter. butter yeah. I, I could see where that would be tasty. I, and I, I completely understand what he's doing. Dipping is Cause good. I love peanut butter, but you need something with it. But then you take the peanut butter just out something. next time you want to use it, and it's full of Doritos crumbs. So why don't you just fucking take a knife and use it, then dip and scrape it off the knife with the fucking Doritos? I don't know. He dips the Doritos in a jar. Speaking of peanut butter, you want to know my treat? I make tiny little saltine peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for myself. Uh, 
Uh, but on saltines, that's I love like, a saltine. Yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Love a saltine. I yeah, spread that peanut butter on nice, a little, a little jelly. Put another saltine on top. I got mini little. Uh, and that's a treat. Yeah, it's a wonderful treat. I lick that's them and smell them. The saltine. Do you? Do you have to oh. smell it after you, you lick it? You it doesn't smell. smell your no, gross no, 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 it doesn't smell like breath at all. It smells like the actual. Never wet smells cracker. Like, yeah, like cracker. You like wet cracker? It smells weird. Like lick a pretzel and sniff it. I don't know why I've been doing that my whole life. You so, do? Yeah. That's OCD. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jimmy goes, yeah. 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 My parents are weird for getting ice, but you're licking crackers and smelling them. Exactly. And I agree. Right. You're saying that sarcastically, but what you just said is correct. <laughs> Those are not mutually exclusive things. Jimmy and I are gym rats, so we can appreciate some good salt. That's right. Salt tastes way better after you work out. I didn't realize I was hanging way out with a couple better. of gym rats. Yeah. Yep. According to Colin, that's exactly what I am. You can see the episode. <laughs> I still have. I still. Oh, yeah. I still haven't seen your episode. I'm behind on Cop Show, which is yeah. brilliant. People should watch Colin Quinn's very uh, good. Cop Show. I'm behind though. I apologize. I, I got to watch that now tonight. All right. So the Jeopardy thing. Uh, 